welcome to Roasting the World, where we offer an adversarial perspective on today's cultural issues. We do it for the intelligent culture. I'm your host, Keenan Robinson, and we have a special guest today. Jamie Parks. Uh, so, Jamie, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I am a native of Flint, Michigan. Uh, went to school here in Nashville, Tennessee, TSU. Yay, go Tigers. And right now, I am currently a special education teacher who also has some knowledge in investments. Um, I currently work as a financial organizer for people and businesses who do not have time to do it themselves. And our issue to be roasted today are investments, stocks, bonds, properties, cryptocurrency, bitcoins, you name it, we're talking about it today. Um, first, I'll give you a little bit of background for my own experiences with investments. Um, you know, I've had stock in U.S. Bank when I worked there um, and sold it, which I should have kept. Um, I ended up getting some good advice from one of my family members and invested in some stocks last year uh, when everything had dipped down and it started making some money, sold it and took the money. <laughs> um, but I also noticed that when the money started going down as far as the investment, I started getting scared. You know, as a novice, I was like, I think I'm going to lose all my money. Um, so I pulled my money out, you know, and, and I just want to know, you know, what your take is. What do you feel like the best things to do are um, overall and give us some of your um, expertise and some of your thoughts on what's going on now in our culture? Because a lot more people are investing and trying to open that realm, getting rental properties and different things like that also. So give us a little bit of your take on those. Well, first, I want to start with I'm not going to tell anyone to do what to do with their money. OK, okay. Um, as a novice, pulling your money out when you see the dips going and you, you see yourself <laughs> losing. It, it's very natural. It's a very natural reaction. Right. However, stocks, I feel, are for more seasoned investors okay. um, because they take some research. Right. Take some research. You got to know what you're investing into and you got to know how to hold it and, and have that faith that that business is going to outweigh that dip and eventually rise back up. Um, if you don't have the money to lose, I would not suggest that you invest it. I don't have the money to lose. <laughs> <laughs> so going that route, um, even my take on stocks, I don't have any myself personally. Okay. But I trade stocks. I don't okay. purchase stocks. I trade them. Okay. Tell um, us a little bit more about that. Like, what is that? What's the difference? Between... Okay. Well, it started with me trading Forex, which is foreign exchange currencies. Okay. Um, like, as if I, w I was to travel to Japan and turn over my dollar for a Japanese yen, they would give me that value of my dollar back in Japanese money. Right. Um, but you don't have to travel to, you know, operate in the Forex market. Okay. Um, so once I learned how to read the market and read the candlesticks and what they actually tell you, then I knew how to trade the money and make better, more accurate predictions on whether or not that dollar or that coin or that currency would either elevate or deflate. Okay. Um, but once you learn how to read a candlestick chart, it can apply to anything, crypto, stocks, bonds. If you know how to read a chart you can do the trading. So to me, it just became a little bit more simpler to trade it as opposed to purchasing a stock. Now, as a, as a person that is not hip to the lingo, what is the candlestick and all that stuff? Because I'm thinking a real candlestick or maybe some type of chart or what What do you mean by that? Well, it's, it is the chart. You know, okay. the, the, the chart looks foreign to a lot of people. Right. Uh, you know, that it's not something that they teach us in school. Right. So you are using a different part of your brain to be able to read those charts, but the charts are made up with candlesticks. Okay. Um, you have some that are like regular line graphs, bar graphs, and so forth, but I usually put mine on the candlestick chart because the candlesticks actually tell you what they're going to do next. Okay. Um, what about uh, like investment properties? I know a lot of people like I actually want to... Uh, purchase like some triplexes, duplexes, rent them out, have some generational things I can leave to my family, some land. Um, and also uh, there's this big Bitcoin thing that's going on. And uh, tell us, you know, what, what do you have going on and what are your uh, recommendations on some of those areas or just, you know, just some thoughts that you have in those areas? Okay. Um, 
I like the idea of investment in properties in real estate land. Um, I would actually prefer to uh, purchase investment properties over purchasing a home first. Okay. Um, Someone else told me that. They said, go ahead. And I was like, I just left this side of town when I was making less money and I had to live in this side of town because I only could afford that. And they're like, now they're saying, okay, now I live in a different, more affluent side of town. Um, no better, you know, it's just different. And they're saying, okay, for your investment property, you need to go back over there and live there for four or five years to, and then you can rent it out, you know, the other side, if it's a duplex, live in one side, rent free or something like that. And I'm like, dude, that's a great idea. (laughs) But they're saying live like that for a certain number of times so that you can live how you want. Mm-hmm. for a longer period of time. So I kind of got the concept, but I was like, man, that's... Or <laughs> even just as much as how comfortable you are in your own space now. Right. Um, you know, most people feel like, you know, I got to go buy me a house. I right. have to go buy me a house. And that's not to say you shouldn't. Again, right. like I said, I'm not going to tell anybody what to do with their money. Right. However, the smarter way to do that would be to purchase an investment property purchase a duplex, a triplex, a a multifamily uh, complex, or what have you, or even, you know, purchase a home where you can use a portion of your home to rent out. Because once you obtain a mortgage, um, that's not an asset. Your house is not an asset. Hmm. It's a liability. Even if you have equity? Even if you have equity, your house is not an asset Mm. because you're paying the mortgage every month and you're responsible for everything that happens in your home. But if you have a portion of your home that you can rent out for income, Mm -hmm. now you have someone else helping you with those expenses. And that's more of an asset. Absolutely. Because I always hear people say, well, you've been renting for this time. You're throwing your money away, right? And you're not putting it towards something that's your own. And I, and I totally agree with that, but I also like the fact that I'm liquid. Right mm-hmm. now, if I want to leave this place and go move in with my girlfriend, my mom, my cousin, my daughter, whoever, I can, and I don't have 20 years worth of mortgage left to still pay. Right. You know? Or even if something breaks down, you, you call your landlord to come right. fix it. Come you fix don't have this, because <laughs> I don't own this. This is not mine. I can move if I'm not happy. Right. You know, so I, I really have been kind of, in that process, and then um, there was a um, there was a house um, that I was looking at, four bedrooms, two baths. Mm-hmm. On paper, it looked nice, but when I went to see it, it was way too small. Okay. You know, and they was like, "Oh, you can knock down a wall or do." And I was like, "No, nah, I don't. I need it to be ready to rock and roll while I'm home." But as a first time home buyer, I thought that I was gonna get like some down payment assistance, FHA loans, and all. They was like, "No, we're gonna go the traditional route. We need you to drop ten thousand on it." And I was like, well, I don't got 10000 right now. You know, I got like six or something like that. And they were like, well, we need this by a thousand earnest money and this and that. So I just felt like, why are they not offering me the things that I hear everyone else talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and so it made me frustrated, you know? And then I just was like, okay, I'm just going to stay where I'm at, get more money together, get an investment property. And then I'll just, I'll just run it that way too. But it, it was kind of frustrating. Um, and I, I tried to, you know, try to navigate that, but it was, yeah. So I do have a question for you. Okay. So what's the difference between a stock and a bond? Well, a stock is ownership of a small piece of a company. Right. Okay. So you're, you when you buy stocks, you're buying shares of a company. Right. So your stock performance is based on that company performance. Okay. So when you see your stocks rising, that means that company is doing well. When you see your stocks falling, that means that your your company is, you know, missing out on some business. Right. 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 For for lack of a better word. Right. Right. Um, But a bond is more guaranteed. Okay. It's more guaranteed. It's more guaranteed. Okay. Okay. Um, for instance, one of my investments that, um, I even have my son doing this. He's only nine. Right. Um, every time he gathers up a hundred dollars, we buy a treasury bond. Oh, okay. Okay. What that means is we become lenders to the government. Oh, 
okay. I need to be a lender to the government. Okay. And the thing about those bonds is, you know, normally like when you go through CDs and bonds through your bank, they make you wait a few years for that interest to accrue before you can even touch your money. Right. With the treasury bonds, you can get your investment back within 28 days. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and, and you still have the bond because they've made money off of being... They made interest off of you lending them the money? Correct. They pay you the interest hmm. for lending them the money. Okay. So you get your money back plus interest. That is very interesting. <laughs> exactly. That is something I'm sure a lot of people do not know. Yes. And if they do know, not a lot of people are doing it. Otherwise, you would have way more money out here. <laughs> Absolutely. Really? Okay, Absolutely. So, so I, okay, so I was talking to someone else. And this may be a little off, off subject, partially. But... There's enough money in our culture right now, and I mean, like, when I say culture, I mean people of color, uh-huh. to put your money together and build a community. Absolutely. And and I've heard they're doing some things like that in Atlanta and Georgia, um, but I also hear, well, we already tried that in Tulsa, and they burnt it down, or they already tried that in this place, and, and they, you know, you know, the powers that be, we already know who they is, but, they, you know, things happen. So, so my question is now in 2021, why are we not community building on a higher scale? Like I know in spots we're doing it. I'm not going to say it's mm-hmm. not happening. Maybe it's happening in secret. But I, I just I feel like I need to see more of this because that's what's going to be able to build the infrastructure, critical infrastructure, building schools, water company, electric grids, uh, neighborhoods, self-policing, um, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. To where it can, because we, we really need to start building up because we cannot sit here and keep depending on, you know, right. the government to do these things because they're teaching our kids certain things. And if we don't agree with that, we need to write our own textbook. You know, Absolutely. we need to be teaching our, our kids certain things. Absolutely. And, and I do agree with, you know, coming together and doing things as a unit as far as, you know, everybody. But I also know that there's a critical shortage in some of these areas. Mm-hmm. So the investment that I see needs to take place in building up our communities. Absolutely. And I'm in total agreement with that. However, you and I have the commonalities in that area. That's why we think the same about (laughs) that. Um, But, you know, a lot of it is people are making excuses. Okay. And um, excuses are fueled by fear. Uh, Right. So you got a lot of people of color who are afraid of that Tulsa thing happening again. And therefore using it as an excuse not to build a platform. Okay. However, you and I both know this is 2021. We are so much more creative and have so many more resources that we can still build this thing back up bigger and better and right. blow it out the water. And like you said, and become non-dependent on our government peers right. to help our community to right. do things for our community. Because they only do what they want to do or what, and they only give us what they want us to have. Right. And that's even in the knowledge that they give you in the books that they give you in the schools and the curriculums. Absolutely. You, you know, one thing that I've noticed and I heard uh, someone else speaking on, I believe it was Dr. Umar probably, mm-hmm. um, that, you know, I don't know when, but back in the day, um, we taught skills. And when I say skills, I mean like electrician. You knew how to, you were a farmer. You knew how to, you know, build houses. You know, you were a brick mason. You know, actual things that you can apply. And you didn't, you may have went to college or school, but you had a trade that you can have. And we have a lot of people in our... And do you remember those skills used to be passed down in the family? Used to be passed down through the family. And we have a lot of people that, you know, because it's prison pipeline that we have, you know, that we're fighting against, um, that come out and they don't, they can't do anything. And and I do believe that we need to get back in the investment in that critical infrastructure, uh, infrastructure, um part of development where we have our students Mm -hmm. learning these skills because they're survival skills. If you don't know how to build a shelter, then what happens when the lights go out? Exactly. If you don't know how to farm, what happens when the food truck stops going to to the, uh, to the Whole Foods or the Kroger or to, to, you know, wherever you get your food from, Right. you know, a lot of people don't know back in the day they have farms. You had to, you know, strangle the chicken and, you know, kill to get the sausage, you know, and they just think it just comes. But in the world that we live in, we're so comfortable Mm -hmm. and we're so used to these 
uh, pleasantries. We live like kings here in some areas, like as far as food and stuff, like, not in social justice and things like that. I, I totally understand that. But in some areas, we're very complacent mm -hmm. because we've gotten comfortable. Mm -hmm. We need to get un more uncomfortable and mm -hmm. start investing in our next generation of great thinkers and great builders and great doers. Because right now, it's a lot of people that want to be in that same circle. They're not investing mm -hmm. in anything outside of music, hair. sports, hair, and I'm trying to think what else. Like, there's a lot of, you know. <laughs> Literally, food. Literally. Like, we eat out more than any right. other culture. But we don't own the businesses that we're going exactly. to eat out. And if well, we see, do, here's the thing. This is why Black Wall Street was such a success. Mm -hmm. Um. Because the end of segregation was the worst thing that happened to our culture. Okay. Um, because that is when we got excited that we could sit at their white counters and, you know, spend our money with them and, you know, integrate with these new things, so to speak, that we had been limited to. But prior to, segre prior to integration, mm -hmm. segregation forced us. To get your own. To get our, not only get our own, but to spend with our own. Right, because you so know the how dollars the, the had dollars, to circulate right. within our own right now community. Right now, it's only six hours. The exactly. dollars stays in black neighborhoods six, six hours. Six hours. Everybody else is like four days, and that's that's crazy because you know I, part of it is due to our history, where we um, we're nouveau riche, mm -hmm. we're fresh out, and we want stuff. We see, oh, they've been having, you know, the nice clothes, the nice cars, the nice jewelry. So now we want those things. But, but why do we really want them? Is it because we really want them or is it the desire to fit in with them? It's the desire to fit in. Absolutely. And then nobody's going to admit it. But, um, you know, we came up in a time when we didn't like who we were. Mm -hmm. it, it took until we got to the 60s, which is a long time from the 15, 1600s, until we started saying, you know, I'm black and I'm proud and all this. And we started investing in ourselves but how many of us up. now still in 2021 still don't like ourselves that's true and, and, and that's and you, a big and part if you don't like problem. who you are then you're not going to invest in yourself you're not going to invest in your children you're just going to keep that and cycle you're certainly going. not going to invest in your community you're not going to invest in your community you're going to actually divest from it and you're going to pull from it and you're, you're not going to help build it up because right now even what we even on the channels that we have like BET is owned by nine people of color, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that's black entertainment television. Absolutely. Um, you got the own network, but Oprah, you know, she's doing her own thing. But, you know, uh, Mr. Bill Cosby was trying to uh, buy NBC or something, but he went to jail, got out. I'm not sure if he's still trying to buy something or not, but I don't I don't <laughs> know. If they're gonna, right, I don't know if they're going to do that now. But but what do we have? Like, I understand, you know, when people were rioting. You know, during the protests and things like that, they said, well, we don't own any, none of this stuff. Mm -hmm. None of this is ours. So, yeah, we're going to burn it down. We're going to break it and all that stuff. But what about when we do get it? Mm -hmm. Then what? We have to have that pride and ownership. We have to, we have to support and invest into these small businesses. You know, I have my own film company. I, I've done four, you know, films that have been picked up by dis distributors Absolutely. and different things like that. I don't really talk about it on this particular platform. Um, but, you know, and I'm in the educational field, so I'm investing in making content for people that look like me. Absolutely. Because a long time I was watching television, I didn't see that. Uh-huh. You know, Superman, Batman, all these people that, you know, people oh, yeah, that we were definitely they much wanted older to and be age. like, nobody <laughs> saw it. You know, it wasn't looking like me. So I was like, well, I can't be that person, even as far as the president of the United States. Mm -hmm. We just had Barack Obama, President Obama, you know, a few years back. But for years, no one thought they could be the president. Mm -hmm. Now we have a woman president, which is awesome. So that empowers our women and, you know, you know, different things like that. But it's only one or two from 50 Right, you right. know, from hundreds of years, so we need to continue to win and and, and and invest in our youth to let them know they can be whatever they want to be. But they also need to know that they need to have certain things taught to them by their parents, by the people in the community. By that's the a, community. That's an yes. investment because if you build those kids up, 
they're going to come back and say, well, this person taught me this, this person mm -hmm. taught me that. So now I feel obligated because people invested in me to invest in other people. Do you know I actually uh, went to school with a young lady. Um, she has, you know, a, a beautiful family. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, she went through this stage with one of her daughters okay. where her daughter was feeling excluded, if you will because she was in an affluent area going to a different type of school, not very many children in the school who looked like her. Right. So she had this self-esteem issue. Right. She began to write books mm. um, that portrayed kids who look like herself. Right. Um, now mm. she has a whole series out, and Man, she's yeah. doing wonderful with it. I yep. mean, just absolutely wonderful. Um, and I did not know at the time that I had already purchased one of the books mm -hmm. a few years ago. It's called uh, Hair Like Mine. Okay. Yep. You remember how my son yep. used to have a whole lot of hair? Right. Right. <laughs> and so the book is called Hair Like Mine. Mm -hmm. It was a couple years later before I realized I had purchased that from one of my classmates and that she was the author. Right. That, wow. Um, and that's what we need. But we that's need, what we need. Yeah. We, we need that. And there's, you know, we have black bookstores. We have, you know, black authors. We have a lot of very talented people in our community who they're either not getting the exposure and support from us. Right. Or they're afraid to market themselves right. because of the scrutiny that they may face. Right. And, right. and, right. but nobody ever told anyone else that they couldn't do things. We're the only ones placing limitations on ourselves right. because we believed in those limitations that they gave us. Right. So we have another box and another wall to break down to come out of our shells. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, now in discussing our perspectives, we have what we call roast time. Okay. Um, so you get to roast or toast the topic that we're talking about. So the topic is investments, which can be all types of investments. Mm -hmm. um, and roasting is if you think that is crap and you want to burn it down and you don't think it's prevalent <laughs> or it resonates with our community and our culture. Or you toast it, which means you hold your glass up to it and you say, yes, this is something that we need to discuss. This needs to be under uh, undertaken by our community and culture and, and dived more into so you get about, you know, a minute or two to talk about your last words and how you feel about this particular issue. You can talk to the to the community, to the world, to the family, you know, so to speak. And uh, tell us how you feel. All right. Well, when it comes to investments, uh, whether it be in our community, in ourselves, our education or just financial, it is definitely something that we need to break down barriers in our own community and make sure that we can build our next you know, Black Wall Street. It doesn't have to be in one area that we build this in. We can build it over several cities, over several states, and just know that we have, you know, just like anybody else has Chinatown or Little Mexico or whatever they want to call it, we should always have some type of set community that we know we can shop with our people and commune, commune with our people and have that same sense of love and, and trust within our own community. Right, because you know what they do. Um, in our hoods or neighborhoods or whatever you want to call them, people will come in and they say there's no money here mm -hmm. and they'll start a business. Mm -hmm. Laundromat, a bodega, uh, uh, a corner store, 7 Eleven, whatever, station, gas whatever. station, whatever it is, a food marketplace, and we'll patronize them. Mm -hmm. Why can't we Happily. start those businesses? Why can't we start those businesses? That's an investment in your community and build out, man. Mm -hmm. They're gentrifying all of this stuff and we could be building it up. I think that our biggest thing is we need to figure out how to pull together as a community and buy our land back. Right. And then rebuild and restructure our communities by us. We're going to need some of that reparation money. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We make enough of it. We spend we enough do, of it right. with everybody yeah. else. We right. make enough of it. Right. It's not about how much money you make. It's about what you do with it. Right. All right. Well, until next time, stay ready so you don't got to get ready. And be ready for another exciting episode of Roasting the World. And I want to thank you for coming in as a guest. I really appreciate you. I feel like uh, this will be, you know, something that's really pertinent and uh, people will really resonate with some of the things that we discussed and talked about. Well, thank you for having me.